Our first guest today is the MD and CEO of KEC International. He is also a management board member of RPG Group. With over 36 years of rich and diversified experience across various sectors such as pharma, oil and gas, fertilizers and now infrastructure, Mr. Vimal Kejriwal is in the unenviable position today of fostering diversity in a company which brings infrastructure connects the world in probably some of the harshest terrains and most difficult regions. So over to Mr. Kejriwal, welcome sir. Thank you so much. Uh, so talking about uh, diversity, what do you think is the current scenario in organizations who are currently trying to foster diversity? So if you look at over the years, the way the d agenda has developed, it was initially restricted to gender, that how many females you have in your organization and all that. But if you look at the last few years, it has clearly changed over nationalities. Do you have people of other nationalities working with you? It has changed over education background. Why does an EPC company only have um, an engineer or a chartered accountant? Why not an arts graduate or something like that? So that's another piece which is changing. The third I'll say would be on the, I'll say abilities. I don't know if that's the right word to use, physical abilities, etc. Physically challenged, how do you get more people with such people? Other thing would be people with, you know, different abilities altogether. Can we use those abilities to develop and, you know, use, uh, use them in an organization very well. If you look at some of the international reports on uh, DNI, especially the one on McKinsey, that report very clearly talks about the organizations which are practicing DNI actively have, have been better off than the organizations which are not practicing. Uh, organization with DNI has helped the, the particular organization to have better customer orientation, better employee relationships, more productivity in the organization, etc. So I think DNI as as uh, as a I'll say an, an activity or or a movement is here to stay, and I think all of us have to actively support it. And of course, it leads to a much more richer and diverse uh, workforce, more ideas coming in. Um, while you know we all know that that is the right way to go and i think from your perspective you as i said are in you're leading a company where there are practical problems in really trying to go out and let's just bring about that you know that uh, thing about women employees also uh, physically people with uh, disabilities uh, in project sites so what are some of the challenges you're facing really let's have a very you know so, so let, let me just tell you about about kc because you may have a lot of people who do not know about kc we are an EPC organization uh, which uh, executes projects physically. And we are today doing almost 175 projects across 29 countries. So the, the concept or I'll say that the view about EPC is that it's, it's a very difficult uh, workplace, male dominated, uh, and uh, let's say an, an organization or, or a, the work culture is such that you need to put in Hard work, when I say hard work, laborious work, it's not hard in that sense. So it, it's considered to be uh, typically a male dominated uh, organization and the way it's, it's there. But I think we have been working a lot on trying to change uh, all these things. And I think what are we also getting help from is, you know, a lot of mechanization in our processes, digitalization, etc. Which is, you know, sort of reducing a lot of labor intensity or, or laboriousness of the job, if I can use that word. So jobs are becoming... Uh, less tiresome, etc. So one of those those are the things which are uh, from outside helping us. But internally, I think it's it's a question of how we break out stereotypes and say that you know these jobs can be done by women. If you if you look at our uh, breakup of our uh, uh, employees, as I said, we are in 29 29 countries, so we definitely have people of more than that nationalities working with us. So more than 29 nationality people are are, are working with us. Automatic diversity taking place. With our emphasis on DNI in the last few years, our number of women employees as a percentage has gone up by 40%. Okay, we now have women employees working on uh, project sites, etc. Apart from just doing physical, you know, and head office, etc., which is a more easier uh, way to attract people. I think a lot of lot of uh, things have been done. We are now pushing uh, the employment of uh, not only women but also the, the other pieces of diversity into our factories etc making them much more uh, i'll say hospitable for for the diversity candidates and i think the another problem probably even the women candidates face is that they have to convince their families 
that you I, I, I will give an example recently we sent one of our im graduates a lady graduate to malaysia okay on a project site, project site. from india and she was actually working in our office in mumbai and when she volunteered to go we were all very apprehensive saying is this a right decision should we actually be doing it or not and i don't know whether we should do it or not but our hr had actually called up the candidate's father and had a, a word with him saying are you comfortable with this are you you know and to and also to reassure him that you know she is going to go so maybe it was out of the way i am still not sure that we should have done that talk to the parents and all that but then it also gives a lot of assurance that yes so i think what we are doing is is is, is that and i think what i hear is that she is pretty happy now it's more than 6 months she has been there that was actually one of our first experiences oh, wow. of you know sending someone to the project site we have we have had uh, uh, females going into our engineering team etc staying in dubai etc but going to a place like malaysia and working on project site was the first experience i think we are pretty happy with it and i think that will help us and you know expanding it further yes yes absolutely and uh, coming more specifically to while we always talk about you know what is the next edge of skill sets people must develop do you think there's a particular you know for women is there what are the critical success factors for women to be and is there anything different that you would say you would advise to your male uh, employees the one is we need to clearly break the stereotypes which we have in our mind we have uh, i'll say barriers walls and i'll say it's on both the sides okay we, we have been clearly facing a lot of resistance in hiring of women because uh, i'll say uh, for reasons attributable to both sides a manager is always very apprehensive saying should i take a woman employee or not will i be able to adjust to her will she be able to deliver what i want you know do i have to change my not normal behavior uh, you know and since we are an epc where we have generally do have late sittings never required etc will the lady employee be able to do it what what will happen will she be safe you know so there are a lot of things inhibitions are Individu- yes. uh, the similar inhibitions we are seeing in candidates also okay when will i the first question many of them ask us will i will i be asked to sit late and all that now that itself becomes a sort of a barrier saying you know uh, am i hiring someone who's equal to the other candidate True. you know so there are a lot of so i think to me and i think the other thing what uh, probably the candidates or the women employees have to do is also be to be a lot more ambitious than what they are okay many times we find that you know i am a woman so i'll i'll do this That's you know wonderful. i i don't want to I'm so do glad you're making be, this point so beyond this or i will not be able to do that this so is somewhere we have put I, the fears I, within ourselves yeah, so i think somewhere i think even for the women employees they should be very clearly setting up uh, you know lofty targets etc and saying you know, why why can't i achieve that yes absolutely you just now uh, mentioned and to wrap this that you said that you've achieved 40% improvement in your diversity ratios and and i keep saying that it's been difficult for your business what has been the critical success mantra for kc so i think we have done we have done quite a few things uh, least among them is financial incentives like our head hunters are paid 10% extra if, if we select a woman candidate referred by them so you know that that was for to let's say incentivize the outsiders to send us more women candidates in some cases we have been sort of insisting initially saying that our first choice would be to have a woman candidate for particular type of uh, jobs etc i think the other thing what what has happened is that we have changed lot of policies or developed lot of policies which make it more attractive for women to come in you know, like we have we have an extended maternity leave policy you know much much earlier than when the government mandated we have a paternity leave policy you know flexible hours education etc so we did introduce a lot more policies to make it friendly attractive in some places where we were hiring a lot of management graduates etc where we had a choice i think we are very clearly from going from let's say 10% of our hiring of gmrs is now 40% the last match were for women employees we also have a scheme called uh, on engineering leadership program where we hire young engineers who are trained in various facets and then placed into the organization in the first year we probably had less than 10% uh, women employees this time it's it's almost up to 30 40% seeing okay, wonderful so, results yeah so we are, we are quite happy with it okay clearly we need to do a lot more to to push it i think we are working on it great great and uh, thank you so much i think you're already you've uh, given us a list of things which probably other companies can also emulate and thank you so much for your time sir my pleasure thank, thank you, you so sir. much bye